I just had this dream where I was this really cringy YouTuber who pretended to wake up in his YouTube videos. Today, I want to show you what $700 per month can get you right in the heart of Bangkok. And at the end, I'm also going to share two simple tricks that I use to actually save $500 a month on my rent and also reduce the rental term down from 12 months to six months. Also, if you like all things Thailand, please do think about smashing the like button on this video and subscribing to this channel. Some people that make YouTube videos are a little bit hesitant about actually showing people where it is that they live. And I fully expect that in about 12 videos time, I'm gonna be coming to this balcony with thousands of adoring fans, similar to when Michael Jackson held his baby out of the window. But we will deal with that when it comes to it. So let's start with the kitchen. All right, first off, this is a lived kitchen, right? So please no shit about the mess. Nice storage area, okay? Big storage. Then on the other side, nice microwave. I mean, it is what it is, right? Sink, got your hobs here. Then you got your plugs here. Something to be mindful of. A lot of the plugs in Thailand, you put your shit in, big spark, right? Don't need it, just something to be mindful of. Something that's very useful in these little condos is you don't have an oven. So something like a little slow cooker here, uh, an air fryer, very useful indeed. Now, one of the great things about living in Thailand actually is all of the cheap food that you can get. So love these protein shakes from 7-Eleven. Again, from 7-Eleven as well, like the microwave meals that they do are ridiculous. These are like 45 baht, so it's like $1.10, $1.20, and they're so good. Literally, you never need to cook a day in your life, but you might want to, and if you do, when you get so much vegetables and things from around the different places, if you wanna do some really good shopping in Bangkok, then head to Klong Pei Market. And again, eggs, super cheap here, and all the other random crap. Also, there is a very big freezer, which is certainly enough storage space for all of your random crap that you might have. Anyway, stay cool. Now, something that's very good about this condo is it's got a very nice sofa. What you're gonna see is when you're shopping for different condos in Bangkok, a lot of the sofas really suck. This has got a very nice, comfy sofa that I very much enjoy sitting on. Have a little look at this view. Oh, beautiful. And nice sized balcony to just leave all your crap really and dry your underwear. Yes, but this is probably the best thing about the condo and that is this little seating area over here. I mean, it's so nice just to sit down, put your feet up, have a little book and look at this view. Honestly, this is so good. Now, one thing that this bathroom does have is this banging overhead shower for washing my lovely hair. Now, it should be worth noting the water temperature is very inconsistent. So it will just blow hot and cold whenever it bloody well likes. So you do like the little readjusting thing, make it a little bit hotter, a little bit colder, and it either goes so hot that it's like being stuck in a rhino's stomach and crawling out of its butt crack, or so cold you're literally freezing your tits off. So that is just something to bear in mind, but you will be burned or frozen from above. One of the things I really love about this bathroom is just its general modern look, right? Marble everywhere. Then we've got the basin area here onto the toilet. Now this, these are gems, right? You have no idea. As nice as this condo is, and look, it's, it's beautiful, right? It really is very nice. Probably the best thing about this actual condo is the facilities, which I wanna show you now. Now one of the slightly frustrating things about this building is the lifts. Now there's not really enough lifts for the people that are in the building. So what that can do is that can lead to you sort of sitting and waiting here for like three to five minutes for a lift. And it can be a fucker, right? You can be on the say 24th floor and it will come up to like the 23rd floor, pick someone up and go back down. And then it finally decides to send the next one up and it can be a real pain in the ass, especially at rush hour. And it's pretty toasty up here. That being said, quite a nice view. So there are worse places to be stuck and I totally appreciate 
these are caviar problems, right? Ah, oh, you know, you've got to wait for like three minutes for your lift up to the gym in your condo where there's a lovely pool and you know, these are caviar problems. I totally understand that, but they are problems nonetheless and we are experiencing them as we speak. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. Upstairs, uh, just above the gym and the swimming area, there's a really cool little co-working space. Uh, which I want to show you now because it's a really great little place to sit in a couple work, couple hours work and also have a little game pool. One of the things I absolutely love about this gym is how quiet it is. Right now it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I am basically the only person in here. Got the treadmill section here and then my girlfriend. <laughs> okay, nearly died. And then one other person in here. Other than that, put it into myself. Nearly died though. As far as the gym facilities go, these are really good. You've got a really good Smith machine here. You've got around 25 kilo plate, a 20 kilo plate, pretty much one of each of the major plates for each side. Then you've got this machine here, which acts as a bit of a back row, a chest press, a lat pull down, and a leg extension. Relatively heavy, heavy enough, depending on, well, who you are. Really nice view. I mean, check this out. Lovely view here from the gym. You got this complete waste of space. I don't even know what it is. Decline bench and dumbbells here. Now the dumbbells go up to 20 kilos. Um, and that's pretty standard for all of the gyms that I've actually seen for the condos in Bangkok. Good is you've got a flat bench here, two inclined benches as well, which is great. One of the really best things about it is we've got the cables here. So really nice, we've got the D handle, short and long. Uh, we've got a straight bar, we've got a rope as well. And these are nice and heavy, nice and heavy cables as well, uh, with the option for chin-ups, pull-ups, etc. too. Really a nice selection of cardio machines. So we've got the treadmills across the front here. Now really one of the best things about this is the view that you get when you are on the treadmill. I mean, it's such a lovely view. I mean, to come up here and do your cardio, just literally looking out at this view is beautiful. And when you come up here at sunset, I mean, it's so, so nice. Let's just do a bit of a pop in here. And again, look at this little corner spot here. It's so, so nice. We've got the uh, cross trainers. Uh, we've got a selection of one, two cross trainers here. And then we've actually got three bikes, one, two, three bikes, and a recumbent bike here. Again, all with a lovely, lovely view of the Bangkok skyline. Now, one of the best things about Ashton Assault is this pool. It is ridiculous. I mean, check out this view behind me. I mean, that view's very nice too. But I mean, up here, I mean, look at it. And this side too, I mean, look at it. It's just stunning. You've got all these different seating. There's a cockroach back there a second ago. I'm not gonna go back that far. But loads of different seating areas. You've got some screaming kids, which is brilliant. Honestly, really, really, really nice place. Like this pool, is ridiculous and i'll be honest this was like the selling point the gym is just down 
there and every morning when I come up and do my morning cardio and I walk along this skyline it blows my mind like you know there's something called um, desensitization desensitization is when you have less of an emotional response because of repeated exposure to something I haven't had desensitization from this place yet every single morning when I walk to the gym and I walk through this skyline it blows my mind every single time it's amazing it's one of the best things about it and honestly it's not just this I mean there are places all along here there's condos everywhere that have this type of view and it's just banging love Bangkok love Bangkok So I did say if you stuck around to the end, I would share two tips that I use to save $500 and also reduce my rental terms. So what I actually did was, when you're looking for a condo in Bangkok, they've generally all got 12 month leases, right? Now you go online and you see some condos you like, you enter your details and what's gonna happen is an agent's gonna contact you. Now a lot of the online listings that are on there are ghost listings, right? They'll get in contact, say, oh, you know, this one that you looked for actually isn't available, but we have this this one, this one, this one that we also think you're gonna like. Very frustrating, but also the agents are really good and they've generally got condos available in any building complex that you might like. But something to keep in mind is that the agents get like one to two months worth of rental amount as commission. So they're in this interesting place where they have to get you a good enough deal that you're gonna commit and get the condo, but they don't want it to be too low because that's gonna directly impact the commission that they get. So you really wanna make sure that you get an agent that seems very honest honest and communicating openly with you but you also need to go into the negotiation understanding that they have a financial incentive and that the more that you pay the more that they're going to earn but of course that has to be caveated with the fact that if it's too much you're just they're not going to get your business so what i did to actually save around just under a hundred dollars per month um, which was around just under four thousand baht a month on my rent and actually be able to negotiate the rental term down from 12 months, which is generally what's specified down to six, was I offered to pay three months in advance. So I left a two month security deposit. And then what I said is I will pay the first three months rent in advance. And then at that three month point, I'll pay the remaining three months on the six month tenancy in advance as well. So what this meant was the landlord actually got three month installment and then another three month installment. What this does is, you know, landlords, they generally like to get cash up front, right? You know, why not take a bulk sum rather than getting it dripped out each month? Now, for me, and I think maybe if you're considering this, this is really good because if you aren't gonna put that extra money that you're paying in advance, right? So usually you'd pay one month in advance. The other two months rent, if you aren't gonna put that somewhere where it's gonna make you more money than the amount that you can save via the negotiation, it actually makes a lot of sense to do that. So by offering three months and then three months later, the other three months rent, I was able to negotiate down from a 12 month lease to a six month and I brought the rent down by just under 4,000 baht a month. Now this does have its risks and this is that the landlords are generally less incentivized to deal with any thing that's broken, any leaks, any fixes that need doing because they aren't relying on that next bit of money coming in. You know, if you're two weeks away from paying your next installment of your rent, they're gonna be much more likely to come in and get everything fixed swiftly. Whereas if you pay three months in advance and two weeks later you got an issue, they're not gonna collect cash off you for another two and a half months. So they're a bit less incentivized to come and get everything fixed as quickly as they otherwise might be. This was a little bit of advice that I got from the agent that I dealt with. That being said, for me, I was happy to take that risk to bring that lease down from 12 to six months and save you know, around 100, just under $100 a month in my rent. Now, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope this gave you a little bit of an insight into what around $700 a month can get you when you know condo shopping and looking to find a condo in Bangkok. And if you did enjoy this video, please do think about giving the video a like and maybe even the channel subscribe but thank you very much for watching and stay real <laughs> i can't do it stop it fuck's sake stop it i can't do it oh, we gotta find another way i'll do it